Okay, Bob. Thank you all for joining us tonight for this information session on the proposed reopening plan for Hadley Junior High School. My name is Jason Lobach. I'm the Vice President of the Glen Allen School District 41 Board of Education. I'd also like to thank Board President Dr. Robert Bruno, Superintendent Dr. Melissa Koskowski, Assistant Superintendent for Teaching, Learning, and Accountability, Dr. Katie McCluskey, Director of Building and Grounds, Mr. Dave Scarmato, Hadley Principal Steve Dively, for taking the time to join us and be a part of this information session tonight. In considering how to reopen schools, there is no correct plan, but there are important, overarching, and equally valued objectives that must be included in any plan. The hybrid plan being proposed by the district puts the safety of our students and staff as our first priority. A major part of the plan is to mitigate the health risks to our students and staff by faithfully wearing masks and adhering to the six foot social distancing recommendations. Over the past several months, epidemiologists, public health professionals, infectious disease experts, medical school professors and pandemic researchers affiliated with the world's leading public health organizations like the Center for Disease Control, World Health Organization, Center for Evidence-Based Medicine at the University of Oxford, John Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center and the Harvard Medical School, just to name a few, along with the Illinois Department of Public Health and the DuPage County Public Health Department have consistently and without exception stress the effectiveness of wearing masks and practicing social distancing to reduce infectious rates of COVID-19. These mental health experts have stressed that social distancing should be maximized to the greatest possible extent and preferably by at least six feet. Over these past months, the guidance and operations of schools and the recommendations of schools and instructions has consistently changed. The only constants, the only factors that have not been modified is the need to wear masks and the need to maintain six foot social distancing. D41 has listened to these medical experts in developing this hybrid plan and will continue to listen to these medical experts as we move forward tonight. Tonight, we're going to be building off of the information that was provided last week of in our first informational session regarding the reopening of schools and give some more information from the perspective of Hadley Junior High. So I'd like to hand this over to the superintendent of District 41, Dr. Melissa Kozakowski. Melissa. Thank, thank you, Jason, and not, not too bad of a job with the last name. Um, I'd like to kind of kick us off and introduce us for the night um, by saying that we've spent countless hours looking at all of the questions that have been submitted, um, returning phone calls and emails and um, as Jason said, this is kind of a next step um, that's a little bit more specific to Hadley, but we've also had a chance to go through more of the questions. So tonight we hope to accomplish these key things. We want to respond to questions that have been asked about parent input, what our process was and why we made the decisions that we did. Respond to questions about space challenges and options available to us and those that are not available to us. Respond to questions about re-entry criteria for full in-person learning and future planning. Respond to questions about protocols in the event that there is a positive case in a classroom and respond to questions about next steps. You can go on, Mike. When we talk about facilities, it's a, District 41 has had longstanding facilities challenges with crowding particularly in the elementary buildings. So I want to kind of walk us through um, some of these things before I um, turn it over to Dave. And Dave is gonna talk a little bit more about portables. So in getting further answers as people have continued to ask um, questions about our space challenges and, and make recommendations, some of the recommendations that have come forward are really using, um, why can't we just use space available in the community? Um, why can't we use COD? Um, why can't we um, look at a consideration of a new facility? So I want to provide clarification in more detail than we provided the other night when we answered this. 
So as to why we can't just use any available spaces um, that are out there and available, um, it's important to note that a few years back, District 41 had a community space analysis done through a local realtor. The analysis determined that there were no suitable spaces available to expand early learning opportunities nor alleviate the crowding in elementary school. I verified that spaces within our community do not currently exist with village manager Mark Brand. I would like to share some additional information provided by District Legal Counsel and Mr. Fred Munzinger with the DuPage County Regional Office of Education, Health and Life Safety. There are numerous factors that make the use of satellite spaces an impossible solution for District 41. All spaces would require an architect's assessment and report. After that piece is done, there is a waiver application that would need to be submitted um, following a resolution by the board. All work then would need to be performed to make these spaces compliant with Health Life Safety Code and with ADA compliance, including all bathrooms, entries, exits, water fountains, et cetera. Each space would need the required quarantine area, including nursing, custodial, educational, and supervisory staff. Both legal counsel and the Regional Office of Education agreed that this would be a lengthy and extremely expensive process as a temporary solution during COVID. Mr. Munzinger is happy to answer any other questions as is district legal counsel. So I hope that clears up for people why we aren't um, trying to send, you know, 100 students here and 100 students there. When all is said and done, we could be looking at trying to find space for up to 1,600 students and staff members. I'm going to ask Dave to walk us through some of the challenges specifically related to portables. Thanks, Dr. K. Um, recently, staff has investigated um, just trying to get portable classrooms, and there just are no portable classrooms available in our marketplace. Um, secondly, our campuses just do not have adequate green space to accommodate the number of portables that would be ne necessary to house all of our students. Um, also, several sites just are not um, viable for this due to underground stormwater storage. Um, we have some floodplain issues and just green space issues. Um, so th that's just some of the reasons why the portables uh, just wouldn't make sense. It would take a long time to get them installed, get all the electrical and security and all those things implemented. Um, it, it really is just not feasible in the amount of time that we have. Thank you, Dave. And we'll revisit when we talk about next steps and a little bit longer planning. Um, but we really did want to answer the question. Um, we appreciate that people have been really solution focused and, and, um, emailing and calling us with ideas. These kind of summarize the biggest questions um, that people seem to think would be um, quick and fairly easy um, solutions in this situation, and they truly just are not. Um, I am going to turn it over to Dr. McCluskey to talk through some of the information specific to Hadley. A number of questions came in in regards to instruction and what instruction will look like. Um, in this model, we're able to incorporate the largest number of minutes for core instruction while still maintaining that six feet of social distancing. Um, as the district has stated already, um, five days of instruction a week is very important to the district. And so by maintaining that five days a week and maintaining the six feet of social distancing, we are able to provide um, 240 minutes of, core of each core content area throughout the week on a consistent basis. Um, other models that were considered, um, such as models that were two days a week, that only allowed us to um, provide roughly 160 minutes per week in that content area. Um, our in-person instruction will focus on core content, so literacy, math, and science and social studies. Our elective courses will be provided during the remote portion of the day. Um, we are continuing to finalize our schedules with the staff and with the unions 
Um, so as soon as that work is complete, we will be sharing out more specific schedules um, related to Hadley and what the day will look like. Um, some questions came up also about Chromebooks. Our current District 41 students will continue to use the Chromebooks that they have in their possession, and any of our new students will receive their Chromebooks on the first day of school. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, some parents have also asked questions in regards to attendance and grading. Um, student attendance will be recorded daily. Um, that will occur both for the in-person part of the day as well as the remote portion of the day. Um, in grading, we will continue to use our um, current grading policies and practices. So students will be held accountable for the work just as they traditionally have been before the pandemic occurred. Um, grading will follow our district grading policies, but we will also build in that flexibility with students and families in the event that a diagnosis of COVID were to occur, um, we want to ensure that we're being flexible with the families um, for students to be able to get that work done um, if that were to occur. Next slide, please. Okay. And I just want to piggyback a little bit um, on what Kitty has shared um, and assure the community that once we finish going through this information in great detail with staff, um, we will be providing the board with greater detail and we will also be providing the community with greater detail. So some conversations to come up um, that have come up regarding parent input. Um, you know, how will we obtain parent input moving forward? I've already talked with PTA Executive Council about utilizing that platform, that committee, as an opportunity to have um, standing conversations and updates and get input from parents who represent all of our buildings um, while we're on a blended model and just to um, listen to their ideas, listen to their feedback, but to utilize an existing committee structure that we already have in place. Um, it would also be a mechanism for them to bring back information to the buildings and to their PTA membership. It's also crucial that we work together to, um, you know, we are going to need hands and help to make all of these things happen. And our PTA has committed, um, they have always been just a very helpful partnership with us. So their, their um, participation and feedback and input will be crucial. We'll also be jumpstarting our strategic plan committee when it is safe to do so. Um, it's many people to put in a room. So we're revisiting what the format of those meetings may look like, but clearly something that has been as impactful as a required closure and then opening on a blended model and possibly um, with our site set for returning to full in-person as soon as possible. That will be long, lengthy and important conversations to have at our strategic planning process. What has the impact been on us and how do we um, mitigate that impact moving forward? So we will be talking about this um, in the context of strategic plan. We will again be seating two student board members um, on the Board of Education. We have a process that we will go through. And so we will have ongoing student input into our conversations and process. I want to backtrack a little bit and talk about why we didn't offer options before sharing our model. When this mandated closure happened, I've shared with everybody, we have been meeting across DuPage County almost since the week after the, clo the mandated closure took place. We knew very quickly that our space limitations would make this more challenging in District 41 than perhaps some other districts were dealing with. We needed and wanted to work through a model that we knew we could work before rolling it out to parents. Once we had sufficient details, we did send out our first non-binding questionnaire. It was important to us that parents had information in hand to start answering some of the questions that we would be asking them. We wanted to give parents information on our proposed model because none of us believed that asking parents to make choices or indicate preferences without understanding what the year may look like was fair to do to parents. It would also be inherently wrong to ask people to respond to a questionnaire with providing the necessary information or to only present 
full in person or full remote. Full in person we knew would put us into the highest risk category according to the CDC and would very likely have the impact of scaring people who are concerned about COVID into feeling that their only other option was to take the full remote model. So um, while there is no right or wrong answer to the way districts are choosing to do this, our choice was to inform our parents as early as possible so that they had the most amount of planning time that we could give them, but to give them information before anything was approved so that we could start getting their input and answering their questions and that they could make informed choices. Um, I apologize if people felt we should have been able to roll more options or different options out there, but we knew our options would be limited. We just don't have the space. I'm um, moving on, Mike. Thank you to medical protocols. We've had some questions about this and um, part of what I wanna share is we will produce a plan um, document that will be shared after board approval, after our staff is fully informed um, that parents can refer to. Um, it will be on our website. Uh, it will be a, a growing and a building document because um, as I will explain, the CDC is not yet done working on all of the components of things that they will share with us. Um, we will also be making revisions to our parent student handbook so that it's clearly um, easily indicated to parents and students, um, here's what our handbook says under typical instruction, and here's what our handbook says, the revisions that we've had to make to it during um, COVID and during our blended model, or if we were to fall back into full, um, full remote. Um, so parents will get multiple sources of information and resources to refer to. But as of what we have now, um, temperature checks, which will include a level of self-certification, including the required quarantine room. Um, our legal counsel will provide, be providing us with templates to use for doing the required notifications if there is a positive case, um, both with staff and with students. The CDC has also promised that they will be creating these templates and that they will guide us through every process when we have, um, a, if we have a positive case in District 41, the DuPage County Health Department will be our partners in that and make sure that they walk us through um, their forms to use and their processes that have to be followed. Um, again, notifications, those will take place. We will use the DuPage County Health Department forms and we will use their process to make sure that we are communicating um, adequately, appropriately in a timely manner um, with everybody that needs to have that communication and also that we're following any required um, privacy and confidentiality laws, we will take our directives clearly from our law firm and the DuPage County Health Department on our medical protocols um, and our notifications. Our nursing staff um, is now, we're, we're at a point where we can bring them into this and and they are doing additional professional development and they will be key in making sure that our protocols make sense for us and that they are compliant with what our legal counsel directs us to do and also with what the county health department says us, you know, tells us to do. They will be crucial partners in this. In terms of the quarantine question, who quarantines, when and how long? Um, the, the county health department and the CDC has um, determined and defined what it means to be in close contact. And anyone who is within six feet for 15 minutes or more is considered to be in close contact with someone. So if there is a positive case of COVID, um, close contacts would need to quarantine for 14 days. Because we are adhering to six feet and a mask, we're significantly reducing, if not eliminating, the people who would be considered in close contact to um, the confirmed positive case. So what I would like to say is, you know, having to do a large scale quarantine should be the exception and not the norm because of the model that we are using. Um, and we will work with our parents and our students to just emphasize the importance of this. I know Principal Dively will talk a little bit more about um, the capability of our students to comply with everything that we're going to ask them to comply with. Um, we hope to produce videos that will be sent home so that parents and students have a much better understanding before they even come back to us of what the new routines and 
processes and expectations are. We will do that in a very um, age appropriate and welcoming way. We wanna set a great tone for this year, um, but we really believe that with the right modeling and reinforcement and instruction and teaching and practicing of new routines, that our kids will do just as well as, as what we're hearing that kids out there in daycare settings are doing in terms of being able to maintain um, wearing a mask and abide by the six feet, um, you know, with two and a half hours a day of in-person instruction and then potentially, um, you know, if students are bus riders, um, we believe that we have responded to parent concern of, you know, I, I don't want my child in a mask for seven hours or longer. Mike, you can go on. Um, criteria for fully reopening. We've had many conversations already with Karen Ayala of the DuPage County Health Department to establish the criteria, as will all districts who are opening under a blended model or a fully remote model. Um, the DuPage County Health Department will be um, analyzing data differently um, based on attendance areas of different districts. And so they will provide us with the data to look at how we are doing, but also how to compare us to you know, other school districts and how are they doing with confirmed cases, necessary quarantines. We'll be monitoring all of that um, with the, the assistance of the health department. Um, we will make this data and this information a regular agenda item on bo all board meetings. I anticipate that we will be setting some benchmark dates to monitor the data check in with the DuPage County Health Department. And hopefully if the data moves in the right direction that we will set a goal that by winter break, we might be able to transfer, transition into fully in person for all students. Again, that will be based on the guidance of the health department and really based on um, what the status of COVID-19 looks like in DuPage County in our area. And if things are still where they are now, where as of yesterday, we were told that there is a slight and steady increase in DuPage County, um, they may guide us that we need to stay on a blended model um, beyond winter break. But winter break will be an important benchmark for us because we will either be making that shift back into full in-person learning or we will be looking at this is a longer um, situation than anticipated and what does the remainder of our school year look like and also begin planning for the 2021 and 2022 school year. I wanna assure our families that any reopening plan, um, whether it is a move backwards in because that's what's directed by the state, which would put us all back on a full remote plan or that we're starting to make plans to move into bringing all kids back fully in person. Again, that will be standing items that we're talking about at all board meetings and those communications will happen with parents. Um, with the exception, if the state makes a directive um, or there's an executive order back to full remote, um, as soon as we get that, as was done last time, we will communicate that with our families. But families will have a very good idea um, before any kind of switch to full in-person learning were to take place. Um, that's an extensive planning process to reroute buses and totally rebuild our transportation services and to reconfigure our buildings and classrooms. It's not something we could do over a weekend, but we believe that we could likely do that over a winter break, um, particularly if we see that COVID data is moving in the right direction. We're not gonna wait till Christmas break, winter break to start having those conversations. We'll know that because we'll be checking in with the County Health Department on a very frequent basis and we will be having those updates at board meetings. I'm gonna turn it over to President Bruno. You're on mute, Bob. I simply wanted to note that I believe we wanted to invite Mr. Dively in, and we may have had the slides a little bit out of order, which is why you were prompted. You were probably looking at that slide. So uh, I think Steve Dively has a few things he could say this evening, and I'll just be patient and wait. I'll listen. Okay. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Bruno. First, I want to thank the Board of Ed and uh, Dr. Kaszkowski for uh, having me part of this presentation tonight. Uh, I've been anxious uh, to, to address the community and uh, of course be thinking seriously about how Hadley opens safely. You know, uh, Hadley is a, is, is a great school um, and we really pride ourselves in having something available uh, for every child. Um, and as D41 has been working to open up all schools, uh, I've had the, that privilege to, to be at the table and be listening to the conversations. But really uh, to our community, you'll be hearing more from me uh, as with my other uh, principal colleagues, when we get closer to the actual, uh, the details of the school, and when we start designing and building what that day looks like for your child. Uh, when we do that, you know, the safety uh, for your children, the safety for our staff members, uh, it always has to be uh, number one. And, you know, we're talking, uh, Hadley has a student population of almost 1,200 students. And when I think about trying to uh, educate and work with your children. I really think about the, the best scenario that we can do that, uh, but also keep um, all the stakeholders, all the people that work here and, and who work with your children to keep them safe and, and of course your children as well. So one thing I do know about middle school children and, um, is that uh, as we open up the school year and we, and we start building our school day, there's just a couple key pieces that, uh, that I really do believe about um, middle-aged middle level uh, children. Number one, it's consistency and structure. Um, we all do well with consistency, consistency and structure. And I think 12 and 13 year olds do exceptionally well when they know exactly what's expected of them, when it's the same every day, and that uh, we're being very clear and open in our communication. So that consistency and structure is something that I think is really important to Hadley and to the children that go to school here. Uh, the other thing is like clear expectations. I, you know, I work with your children every day and I have found every day that middle school students will follow the rules. So concerns about, you know, taking off the mask or, or being, uh, being inappropriate with or without the mask, or maybe not even just be able to, to understand the importance of staying six feet away from each other. Um, I do believe that if we take the time to explain the importance of the rules, the safety rules that we have in place, we take the time to hear their questions and we keep working on um, that shared ownership of what we're trying to create here at Hadley. I have confidence that we'll be able to have children in our building, keep six feet apart, keep our masks on and remain safe. Uh, the other thing that um, I always strive for is our community and our, our, our learning community. You know, everyone likes to feel a part of something and you, your children is, want to be part of our Hadley community and we want them to be there. So as we look at our structure of the day and we look at the type of experiences that we'll be building, uh, that idea of community and team and working together for a common goal, they'll always be uh, one of the most important things that I'll be working on and stressing for. So uh, I, I'm going to part at this point and say you'll be hearing more from me later as more detail uh, comes out and as we begin building the school day. Uh, but I do want to thank everyone for their support and their patience as we go through the process. Dr. Bruno, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Well, thank you to uh, Dr. Kaskowski and Dr. McCluskey, and Mr. Scamato, Principal Dively, uh, and Mr. Lobach. Now, before offering some closing remarks, I'd like to take a minute uh, to explain the uh, purpose and logistics of, for next Monday's special Board of Education meeting. Uh, first, the meeting agenda will include a presentation of the hybrid plan and a discussion followed by a vote on the district's recommendation for reopening schools on August 21st. We are also working on the logistics that will allow community members who wish to give public comment to do so without being required to submit their comments in an email. When we finalize the arrangements, the community will be publicly uh, notified. I'd like to also share with the community the extensive due diligence that the board has taken in investigating and considering the district's plan. Individual board members met with myself and Dr. Keskowski and Dr. McCluskey for at least an hour to ask questions about the model and to raise concerns. Each session included a thorough explanation of the plan and unconditional opportunities and time for board members to interrogate the specifics of the model. Board members asked dozens of questions and made pointed and important observations 
many of them reoccurring. For example, how could the district help working parents with childcare needs? What were the probable staffing requirements re related to COVID-19 preparedness? What was the status of discussions with our employee unions? Was non-campus space available? How would IEP minutes be provided? How would remote instruction be different? And what were the metrics for being able to return to full in-person learning among numerous others? While board members brought their own perspectives to the weighty problems of how to reopen schools, all of us agreed that mitigating health risks, providing in-person instruction, a more robust remote learning platform, and a stable plan that would minimize the chances of being thrown into full quarantine was paramount. Our sessions were thoughtful, respectful, and helpful to the district. Following our sessions, board members have continued to be diligent in asking questions of the district and providing feedback to them on the plan. My board colleagues were actively engaged with the district's development of the AM PM model and their talents were productively applied on behalf of our children, staff, and parents. Finally, much has been made about what epidemiologists and infectious disease experts know about this virus and its impact on school-aged children. The way science works, the learning develops and adapts as more cases occur and time is factored in. In truth, what is known is constantly evolving. Nonetheless, it is important to go back to school with the data you know and not the data you wish you had. That's why the publication by the New York Times of a CDC schools reopening briefing packet dated July 8 is so informative to our healthcare data driven plan. The briefing document is 69 pages, but here I want to only bring to the community's attention what is on page two. On page two, the CDC lays out the factors that would define reopen schools according to risk. The organization places schools into three categories of risk. Lowest are schools that are fully remote. More risk or a medium risk is a school that opens partially, adheres to all safety recommendations, including at least six foot social distancing. We would more readily fall into this category. Now the highest risk is a school that is, and I'm quoting, full-sized, offers in-person classes, and where students are not spaced apart. In an environment where undoubtedly more will become known about coronavirus and its interaction with children and adults, the district has chosen to act based on the health guidance it knows and avoid putting our children and staff into the highest risk environment. With that, we will adjourn the district's second information session. And I want to thank you all and wish you a pleasant evening.